This is one of a series of videos produced by the Further Mathematics Support Programme for online revision. In this video we'll be looking at the AQAD2 specification and question 6 from the January 2010 paper. This question is one which uh, concerns network flows. The question starts off by saying that we have a, f uh, a diagram showing the flow from S to T uh, with the capacities of each of the pipes shown on the diagram. We're asked first of all to find the value of the cut that's shown uh, by the dotted line. And then the cut on the diagram can be represented as it says by two sets. The what's called the source set S and C which are on the left sort of side of the cut and the sink set A, B and T. We're then asked to complete a table showing the different possible cuts that there are and their capacities. Having done that from the table we can state the maximum flow through the network giving a reason for that and then in um, another figure as to show a possible flow corresponding to this maximum flow. The question goes on to add in extra pipes to uh, a, a another point D and it says taking what we've done already as an initial flow we're to use the labeling procedure to find a new maximal throw th through this new network and when we're doing that we should write down the flow augmenting paths and um, look at the, the, the way that that changes the flow in the network. And finally, having done all of that work, we've got to state the value of the new maximum flow and indicate a possible flow along each edge corresponding to this. Okay, so quite, quite a long question. Um, but uh, we break it down, each, each of the parts is reasonably straightforward, or at least in time-wise. So in part A, we're asked to uh, work out the, the cut. Now remember that, f to work out the cut capacity rather, th to give the uh, cut capacity, what we need to do is to look at the flow for along arcs which are going from the source set SC to the sink set. So flows which are going in that direction are counted. So in this particular one then the, the, the 38, the 25 are certainly in that direction and um, but if we look at the B to C we can see that that one is in the wrong direction so B to C there is going from the sink to the source it's in the other direction it's uh, probably easier to see it on this diagram it's in the wrong direction but C to T so that it, putting that all together then the total flow is S A flow plus S B plus CT and not BC because it's in the wrong direction. And if you add all of those up it comes to a total of 97. So that's what we've been asked to find. I suppose what we should do if we're doing that properly is to, is to write down the actual totals that we get. It's 38 plus 25 plus 34 because we are, we're told that it's 97 in the question. And we've now got to go through and complete these different possibilities. So you can see that the, the cuts have actually been put down there, all the possible eight, and so what we've got to do for each one in turn is to work out its, um, its capacity. Well from S, if we look at SA first of all, in other words we've got a cut along here then the ones that are going um, from that source set SA to the sink set are the 25 there and the 6 
and the 22 and also that 12 there so all of those are going from the source set into the sync set and that gives us a total of 65 Well, when SB is equal to the source set, we have a cut like this. And we can see, therefore, that we've got the 38 there um, and the 19. The 6 from A to B is in the wrong direction. So it's just 38 plus 19 giving us 57. SBC puts the cut in along here and so we're going with the 38 there and the 34 there so we just get the 38 and the 34 and that gives you a total of 72 and then finally We've got S, A, B, C, so we're leaving T by itself. And we can see there the two cuts that we need, to, or the two capacities we need to look at are the 22 and the 34, giving us 56. The marking for these parts of the question then, there was sim a simple B1 mark here. And then for each of the totals that we had to fill in, each of these scored B1. Having completed that table, we're asked to find the maximum flow through the network. So this is um, the reason that we have to do is to do this is that we can use the max flow min cut theorem, and it says that the maximum flow through the network will be equal to the minimum ca capacity that we can find. So we simply need to look at our table and see which is the smallest and we can see that it's this one here at 57 I beg your pardon it's the 53 so do check carefully through the table 53 there not the 57 right so can we uh, show that on our network we're looking at the original network um, of capacities. We can see that to get 53, we will need each of these arcs here to um, be at full capacity. The you, you could always spot that because if you look at our cut, it cuts off C and T. So the arcs going are across this cut here must be at full capacity so we can write those in as 22 12 and 19 and then of course it's just a case of doing some some addition uh, those two 12 and 19 add up to make this one here 31 the um going into a we have a total of 34 which means that we must have 30, sorry, going out of A, um, we've got 34 there. We can have um, 19 coming along SB. And there we are completed. So we've got a total of 53 coming from S, flowing through the diagram and then ending up at T. So that's one way of doing it. There are there are others. We could have, for example, sent um, a, a, an extra four from from S to A, and made that 38, and going from A to B equal to four, and then reducing what we've got in S to B. But that's one possibility. The marking for these in the question then was um, to give a explanation mark for stating max flow min cut theorem and a 
B1 for stating that the um, maximum flow was equal to 53 and then a method mark and an accuracy mark an A mark for the diagram here right and the next part of the question says we've got this extra pipe going in from D with these capacities shown on there and uh, we're asked to use our values that we've just found in figure 5 as an initial flow on a new network diagram figure 6 and so let's look at the new diagram there it is so that's the the flow that we had in um, question 5 and so we've just got to represent that on our new diagram sh f to use the labeling procedure well the labeling procedure indicates the possible changes that we can make to flows within pipes so if we take SA as an example at the moment there's 34 in there and the capacity on the diagram is 38 so we can make changes by reducing the flow that's actually coming backwards here by 34 or increasing it in that direction by 4 so we're looking at the possible changes on this diagram so if we have 19 in SB then it can possibly be reduced by 19 or um, increased up to the capacity of 25 so therefore there's a possible increase of 6 from A to B we've currently got 0 in there so the, the way we can reduce it is by 0 but it has a capacity of 6 so there's a possibility of sending an extra 6 in that direction so we go through the diagram in this, uh, in totally in this fashion at the moment in AC there's 12 so we could reduce that by 12 so change in that direction or increase by 0 that one is saturated likewise at the moment BC is saturated so we can't increase it but we could change it by 19 in that direction from B to D at the moment we've got no flow so 0 coming backwards but it has a capacity of 13 so we could increase by 13 in D to C there's zero flow at the moment so we can come back words here we can change that by zero but we could put 8 from D to C in that direction um, likewise with D to T there's no flow at the moment so zero in this direction but it could go up to a possible six c to t we've got a flow of 31 at the moment so we could change that 31 backwards here or increase it by a possible three in that direction and finally from a to t at the moment we've got a flow of 22 which is at full capacity so we can't increase it in that direction but we could reduce that by a value of 22 well for getting that table correct or at least uh, attempting it there was a single method mark for that part of the question which then goes on to um, use flow augmentation so there's the diagram as it stands at the moment so we've now got to look for paths through this network um, starting at S and finishing at T where we can make changes well one straightforward path that we could use would be from S to B see there's a 6 there and then from B to D 13 and then from D to T now the possible change that we can make there is given by the smallest number so we can see that it's equal to 6 so it is possible then to change this from um, oh sorry by, by adding in a value of 6 to our total flow so putting that on the diagram the path is S 
B D T and the additional flow is 6. Now to do that we have to change the forward pointing arrows by subtracting 6 i.e. we can no longer put another 6 there so we're subtracting from that arrow and adding to the arrow which is facing backwards so if we take 6 off this 13 here it becomes 7 and then the 0 becomes 6 likewise here we'll get 0 and 6 so the forward facing arrow going towards the sink reduces and the one coming backwards towards the source increases because that's the actual flow at the moment so we've increased the flow by a value of 6 we can see that we can't put any more flow along SB which is now saturated because a 0 is shown on that diagram but we could go from S to A 4 there um, we can't go AT, that's 0, or AC, that's 0, but we could go from A to B, because there's a value of 6 there. Um, carrying on, couldn't go from B to C, but we could go from B to D, well that's 7. And then from D to C, and finally from C to T. So as long as the numbers are facing forwards are greater than zero, we can make a change. Let's look at those and see what the smallest is. The smallest value is three. So we're now going to add three along that path. So the path is S, A, B, D, C, T, and the value is three. So making those changes, Remember that the forward facing is going to reduce, so that's going to become 1, and that one there becomes 37. Uh, that becomes 3, and that is also 3. Forward facing reduces to 4, then backward 1 increases to 9. The total is always equal to the capacity at all stages here. So the forward facing one reduces and the backward one increases, the forward facing reduces and the back one increases. Now you can see that all of the um, paths going into T now, A, T, C, T and uh, D, T are all at full capacity. So we've got no further possibilities. The marking for that part of the diagram, or that part of the question rather, was to give M1, A1 here for the uh, table completed and correct procedure shown on the diagram here. Well, our final diagram is shown as at the, at the top left hand side there, and we're asked now to show a possible f maximum throw flow for this diagram in figure 7. So the actual flows in the pipes come from the backward facing arrows. So for example at the moment we've got 37 in SA and 25 in SB. So this is 37 and this is 25. Of course that gives us the maximum flow just adding those two together to give 62 because we have a flow out of S of 62. Likewise, we can see that into T, we have 22, 34, and 6. So 22, 34, and 6. Um, then in SA, there's 3, and AC, 12. Remember, it's the reverse facing arrow that gives us the flow, so 19 here, and in this one, 9. 
and if we look at therefore from um, D to C see that there is a flow of 3 probably just worth checking that you've done the arithmetic correct every uh, all the flows into a particular node must equal the flow out so for example if we take node C here then we can see that going in we've got a total of 12 19 and 3 which is 34 and going out 34 so there we are that's the final part of this diagram or this question done and there were just simply two marks for doing that uh, both B marks, B mark for getting that diagram correct, and another one for that. So that's the end of this particular question. Uh, you can find videos for other questions at www.furthermaths.org.uk.